после кровавой и невероятной битвы против Александра Емельяненко, в которой кровью были залиты и ринг, и оба соперника, Костя Глухов просто не мог не заслужить контракт от One Global. В этой организации всегда ценили настоящих воинов, готовых рубиться и умеющих закатывать крутые бои. Латышского нокаутера, победителя огромного количества турниров по кикбоксингу и Кайван, пригласили для участия в грандиозном М1 Гран-при 2013 года, в котором должны были сразиться ведущие тяжеловесы тех лет, не связанные контрактом с UFC. И в сопернике ему сходу достался действующий чемпион организации. Американец Кенни Гарнер, два года не знавший поражений. В предыдущем поединке он завершил эпичное противостояние с Гуром Гугинишвили, состоявшее из трех боев. А в промежутках между битвами с грузинским бойцом он досрочно победил еще пятерых тяжеловесов, в том числе Магомеда Маликова и Максима Гришина. Болельщиков ожидала битва настоящих ударников тяжелого веса, каждый из которых был готов сражаться и отдать все силы для победы. Костя Глухов from Latvia. 19 knockouts. Three world champion titles. He lost, but today he is back. Kenny Deuce Garner from the USA. Current M1 Challenge Champion. Big and extremely dangerous. Puncher versus Puncher. Kostya Glukov versus Kenny Garner. The main event of tonight's evening. So excited for this one. You know, is it a good thing that Kenny's belt is not on? Actually, feels pretty good that he hasn't, you know, Both trained for 15 years. He, his knee events. probably doesn't have time. problems. Mind to heads, mind to look, look at that <laughs> stare. <laughs> That's a good stare down. Uh, that he, you know, he probably feels um, physically quite good. And, you know, as long as he's not carrying injuries and those kinds of things. So I think the guys that started later but who are older are probably in better shape than the guys who are older who started fighting at 17. Oh, and a right huge start. And Kenny is not kickboxing with Gohov. Kenny is picking him up and trying to throw him and manages to get on top. Now Gohov stands up and very good scramble there from Gohov. Kenny really showed that he... Kenny is definitely the more aggressive fighter in this case, but uh, Gohov is the, the one that counters the, 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 the and What happened there? I see that... Yeah, we have a... Yep. A little bit of a malfunction. Yeah. Now let's look at the start. The start of this fight. And Kenny goes for a huge takedown. And these the are new... really heavy weights. <laughs> yeah. They manage to break the ring ropes. Yeah, the new the, the rage cannot take it. The takedown was, was so good that even the ring was not able to stand up. But and did you see it? They come on this side and the rope broke on the other side of the yeah. rage. Right? And here we've got the restart. And this time Kenny is not going for it. No, he is. He was just coming in for the, for the clinch. So, are you surprised, you know, that Kenny is not kickboxing for him? That nope. he really wants to take this to the ground? No, oh, because I told you before that Kenny is a good wrestler also, and he proves it again by taking Kukov easy to the ground with this and take down. And in fact, he's at least in the half guard at the moment now. Yeah. Um, only. I always wonder that if these guys, like, uh, like if Kenny is in a half guard, I miss the fact that he's really trying to do something. You see, he's just in, uh, holding on now, and he's not doing too much work in this position. No, for sure, Glohov manages to get back to guard and close his guard. So Kenny is now really limited in terms of what he can do in terms of submissions. But he can surely posture up when he's done, and rain down if he blows. Like and did he get into side control? Yes. He manages to, to punch his way into side control. Put your weight down, dudes. Don't let him there. Put your weight down. And we can in the background hear the best corner man in the world. And Guha manages to get half guard once again. Marco is telling him to have some action. Good left hand lands. For Kenny, crosses up, stands up, and Gluhov tries to take advantage of him and get up, and Kenny just wails on him again. Gluhov's face is a little bit red. For sure, we can see the, uh, the efforts of Kenny on, on Gluhov. 
Uh, I can open an attempt from Kenny Gunner. This is a submission attempt, but I'm not sure I've ever seen it work in professional MMA in the last five years. Okay, Kenny punches, postures up once again. We'll have the strength to pick him in the head whilst Kenny is standing over him. And now Kenny is sitting in half guard. And... Uh, He's got him up against the cage part of the rage. Well, anything, we can say anything, but one thing is for sure. Can we see the one fighter in this first round who's taking the, who's doing the most effort to finish the fight? Yeah, for sure. And Dupov is more and more defending, and Ken is crawling over him now. And then Dupov managed to get out. And Dupov manages to get guard again now, and now it's on half guard. So, in interesting strategy from Kenny. I believe this is really the first fight out of about 10 that I've seen him in, in M1, where he's using the strategy. And Michael Brosen just taking, taking the time to cut the bandage off of Garner's glove, and we go back to restarting this three-round fight, one minute left before. And again, they start off with and I think Lohov managed to get a short a short punch in there. Yeah. Kenny drops. And Lohov now goes to work while Skinny is trying to trying to take him down with a single. Michael Brosnan is warning Lohov not to punch the back of the head and Kenny manages to turn Lohov around. And uh, and we're back into the same position. But that was a that was a good punch from Lohov that landed that drop Kenny. Yeah, it definitely dropped Kenny, but he was very smart because, you see, he turned his head so that Glukov could not punch the face. And Glukov immediately got warned by Rekimato Brutsen for not hitting the back of the head, but he could not do anything else because Kenny had turned his face in, inward. Of course, Marco Brutsen is the most experienced referee in one very, very long time veteran referee. You know, it's amazing control in the ring and, uh, and you know, the fighters know exactly what they can be doing, what they can't be doing and um, he makes sure that the rules are always followed. And the first round comes to an end. And I think this first round is, in my opinion, for Kenny Gardner. Yeah, I thought Kenny was by far the most active fighter, the most aggressive fighter. And as I mentioned, the first time that I've really seen him in M1, take this strategy. He's never before tried to wrestle and grapple with a fighter and put him down and try and do something from the top. Very, very interesting to see. So obviously he respects and the big punch lands from, from Ghana. Glukov just doesn't notice it. Let's see if they show us where uh, Glukov dropped him. And, they show that. and a good right game. hand lands from Ghana and another right hand. Glukov has a huge chin. Jeff Monson yelling instructions for Kenny. Yeah, it's interesting if Kenny progresses and then Jeff Monson was also participating in this tournament, we stand a chance that uh, there will be a final between two yeah. Americans and Russia. Mm -hmm, for sure. Not only two Americans, but also two teammates. That's <laughs> even more interesting. Yeah. The second round and a Ooh, huge yeah, spinning heel kick. kick. Yeah. Glukov really starts these off with, with moves that are not only going to finish and the fight, again. they're also going to near kill the opponent. Remember head and tight, remember under his chin? Keep going, keep going, you got it, you and got it. And Kenny drops back. But he didn't uh, succeed in making a proper yeah. return. Yeah. Uh, man is uh, to scramble out of it. And Kenny goes for a, for a body lock takedown. Glukov using the ropes. Michael Brosnan will prevent him from doing so, and we end up. And he can sit on the ground, so it's got an effect. You gotta stay busy if you wanna work down there. Body head, body head. So is this, do you think, any strategy just to sit on top of Blue Hope? Maybe try and catch his mission if there is one, but sit on top and ground the ground. He's doing too little if he's on top, in my opinion. At least in a feeble hammer fist, it's not enough. So his takedowns are okay, 
and if hey, he managed to guys, start from the bounce, then that's of course not also not okay, but he's in uh, the right. technical battle right. skills. And Sam, better. Michael Boston, I think he has a little bit less patience in this round. Uh, Marco, saw, Marco saw the previous round where he saw that Kenny was not doing any uh, some efforts. He and takes him have. down and check. Let's see if Kenny is doing some effort again now. But I doubt it. Wilhoff throws another huge spinning heel kick. If that connects, it's, um, it's the hospital. I don't even think it's, you know, it's... It's like what they used to say about, about Krokop when he fought in his pride. Right leg hospital, left leg symmetry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you see, Glukov looks very comfortable in, uh, on his back with Kenny in the guard. And Marco is gesturing and telling Kenny to have some action again. And Kenny manages to pass into side control and Glukov sweeps him. Unbelievable. Kenny is looking for Kimura and Guho is looking to defend. Kenny doesn't really have it. He's going to get punished here by Guho's right hand. He, he really should let go of that Kimura. This is, this is going to do nothing for him. And once again, Broston warns Guho not to hit the back of the head. And Kenny is also showing that he's been hit in the back of the head. But, you know, it's one of those things. Kenny, ah, in these is. situations, I don't think that the uh, group of his big right hand lands for Guho and a high kick from and the body kick. On the side. Yep. So Kenny is definitely eating some punches and kicks now. Yeah. Guho has huge, powerful legs, they're really heavy. Kenny has to be feeling those kicks. by a punch uh, to the face of, by, uh, by Kenny. Is Kenny still using his strategy or is he now? I think that in this case, what I see now, I don't know if it's strategy or that he is going for the clinch to prevent the group from hitting him. Right hand from, from Vana and the uppercut from Vana. Huge uppercut attempt. We'll have nearly, nearly catches that. And the body kick from Gohov again. And Kenny looks to me like he's he started to, to blow with your head a little bit. He also looks unsteady on his feet. I, I was wondering about the same thing. Looks like he's getting tired, but I, in fact, I can't believe it because Kenny is well known for his endurance. And this is only the second round, so I can't believe that he's really tired. Or he must be stunned by the punch in the beginning. I think he might be stunned. I think it was that exchange where Marco stopped it because he kept getting hit in the back of the head yeah. and then Kenny was showing it. Yeah. I think that's what it was. Because Kenny's just, he's lost all his steam. Yeah, he's not wobbling on his feet, but he doesn't do it here and here again. The high kick. And Kenny has his hands up, but he's really just... The explosiveness is gone. It's gone, like... like like in a second, it's just um, 28 seconds left in the second round of this three round fight. So, only one round to go after this. We're probably also looking a little bit tired, but you know, for sure, the, the steam is still there. The, the anger, the power of the strike is still there. Still there. So Kenny just looks really, you know, like he's swimming through the tree. He uh, managed to get him down. I spoke too soon. Yeah, but also the weight of that is what can uh, help them in this case. Yeah, so it's like over 20 pounds. Yeah. That's a lot of, that's a big difference. Like 10 kilograms. But still, I wonder what happened because then it doesn't really look good fit now. Yeah. He looks very tired. He looks very tired. Everybody's in the corner. Jeff Monson's in the corner. And here at the huge that can just manages to duck under. That's very lucky. His hands went up to protect his head, and this is where the second time Guho tries tries to him, he takes him down. Now, of course, you could make the argument that the spinning heel kick is probably one of the most dangerous strikes in mixed martial arts or in, in, in any contact sport, because the heel, of course, is the biggest bone, the hardest bone in the body that that you can strike with. 
and uh, when it's coming at the end of the lap, which weighs you know, a lot, and with the speed that it's coming at because of the spin, if that hits you on the chin, it's you know, it's all bad. You properly on the head, you can die. That's, yeah, it's that's all something bad. that's for sure. But um, on the other hand, it must be made with ultimate precision, otherwise the opponent can see it coming. And by slightly stepping outward, you smother the kick. Yeah, yeah, for sure. He's gonna kick right away. And we see Kenny's, Kenny's point of saying he's gonna kick right away, and just to prove them wrong, Gulhoff tries to go for, I think, a jumping knee. Both connected punches in this case, and Kenny is really hit yeah. now. You Gulhoff, see his head. Big left hook backward. handed. And Kenny looks, looks dazed to me. Still looks dazed. The right hand for Gulhoff, for Kenny, I'm sorry. And a head kick for Gulhoff. Didn't have much on it. Kenny still got his hands up. The one was Glukov is moving, but body punch by Glukov. Big body punch by Glukov. Glukov, every punch, every kick, he's loading up. There's the, you know, there aren't any pit pat. And again, he's just pushing forward and hanging on and not doing anything really. Yeah. Sure, Glukov gets caught in the I can't imagine that there's something else. Yeah, body and kick. Body kick. Kenny tries to punch at the same time, but no, left hook for Kenny. Barely, barely touches the hook. The precision is out of his punches. Yeah, and the speed and the power, I would say. Also gone. And here he's, he's using his body weight again to push uh, the group of back into the ropes. And Kenny gets the down once again. And is in his close guard. And he's doing nothing. It should be said that in Russia, the judges have been less than, uh, you know, less keen than their perhaps American counterparts to award points to a fighter who just manages to get top position because of the lack of uh, freestyle, folk style wrestling in Russia. Um, of most of the fighters that, you know, fight, or a lot of the fighters that fight, the takedown by itself isn't really counted as, um, you know, a, is such a high point scoring maneuver if we um, consider a fight where there's knockdowns and punches and almost knockouts that was a huge knee, uh, yeah. knee by him uh, by Grukov. yeah uh, but i think that's also in the fact that the rules of, uh, of m1 are slightly different huh? you have the effort to finish the fight you have the damage you have the stand up and ground control aggressiveness and uh, the takedowns but um, it's not really uh, compulsory to see them in that same order. And no? Kenny once again is pressuring Gulhoff into the ropes. Gulhoff gets under hooks. And, and a kick. High kick attempt. Huge, those body punches are so powerful. On the other hand, right just misses. Left hook just misses. Michael Burson warns Gulhoff to close his fist so that there's no eye poking going on. And Kenny just like a windmill moves forward. His arms are flailing, but there's not much behind him. And, and a spinning back kick. That looked like that it went for the yeah, connected. And again, and again a punch little punch. And, yeah. So this must bust Kenny, definitely. Yeah. Warhol is really, really going for Kenny's level. Of course, it's well protected, but still. And, and a spinning back spinning fist. Big fist. We could tell that was coming. I think it looked like he hit with the elbow or with part of the forearm. That was really telegraphed by uh, Kenny saw it. We saw it. And that was an elbow by Kenny. I was lucky that Marco didn't see it. And this is the first fight that Kenny's fought. And of course, you know, anyone who's fought Magomed Malikov, who of course knocked out Alexander Milenko, he's fought quite a lot of reasonably good strikers. In this fight, you could say that he really has been outstruck. Other hand, right, cool, have to score at the top. This is really, really uh, weird for me. I expected much more from Kenny Gardner. Yeah. With the uh, caps off for uh, uh, Lukov that he managed to do this. 
And Kenny looks like he's got nothing left in the tank. Bluehook continuously turns around now, gets underhooks and uses the underhooks, probably to punish the body and also to separate, to avoid the takedowns also. Bluehook is communicating you know, with this corner to the extent that he's actually nodding to them, saying, yeah, I hear what you're saying, I'm going to try and do this. And the very end of the third round, as this fight comes to an end, that's it, Michael Brosnan stops the action. Both fighters have their arms up. Kenny even throws up his do sign. Sure, he looks tired, but he looks like he's still with it. And Gluhov continuing to make his victory lap prior to being announced the winner. <laughs> shows that he's the fittest by doing some extra push ups. Yeah. Goes over to, to the corner of Ghanis. They, they have a little exchange. Monster was, was heard. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Ghanis after three rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecards. And we have a split decision in favor of your no, winner. Oh, these are never good. Constantine Glukov. This was a split decision. Split decision. Split decision. Would you say an upset? Ooh. I don't know. I think that if I see okay, this I'm here with the winner, Constantine. on my scorecard, we had a, we had a little accident with, with, with the ring. Did it, did it put you off your game plan at all? Uh, I understand. Okay. Thank you to everyone that came to support me. I know that there's a lot of supporters for me here. Подарили свои подарки, я не мог проиграть. Спасибо им. Okay. Um, I want to thank everyone who cheered me, who supported for me. Uh, an orphanage uh, came to me. They they kids wanted a photo. They gave me their presents, so I just couldn't lose. Okay. The ring. We had a little accident with the ring. You had to hang around for about five, ten minutes. Did it put you off your game plan at all? No problem. Нет нет проблем, потому что я вышел на бой. Я готов был отдать самого себя всего. Спасибо моему тренерскому штабу, спасибо доктору моему, видите, Айскал, спасибо моему тренеру Юрию Юрьевичу. Like Вся команда, которая за меня yep. поддерживала, это для меня великое начало, я так скажу. Well, it didn't, it didn't affect my game plan, it didn't affect my fight because I was 100% ready. And again, I want to thank everyone and thank my teammates and my coaches. You looked absolutely fit. You were fit from beginning to end. I think you wore, wore Kenny down. Uh, he, he looked tired near the end, so I mean, obviously, you're working on your fitness. That was your game plan, yeah? Ну конечно, я я знал, что Кенни Гарнер тяжелый в прямом смысле боец, и он борец высокого класса. Конечно, была стратегия стендап fight. Okay, so I know that Kenny is a heavy fighter and tough fighter, um, and very endurance fighter. So I had to, you know, stand on the ground. Okay, one more question. Are you looking forward to the next round of the M1 Grand Prix? Конечно, я знаю, что я выхожу на победителя Денис Молдоров и Ибрагимов. Но я уже говорил до этого, что здесь нету слабых бойцов. Все сильные, поэтому я готов драться с любым, готов идти вперёд. Спасибо.